Cold Iron, who is the current owner of, this is Car the Car Kroger, Kroger. K-O-G-E-R. K-O-G-E-R, yes, right. sir. And Koger Island, he owned even that far into the river. Yes, I okay. But that came from Virginia. Yeah. So he is out of Virginia, born in 1792. And he's buried, and his wife and several other family members are buried right out here and in the slave cemeteries right over there. I never Where that big crop of trees. Uh huh. Well, they, I've never been brave enough to go in there. But the family cemetery. Because the snakes love. <laughs> Oh, they love. Yeah, I, I, I traipsed good. around back here one time, and I was like, "Of course, I'm the best time is winter." Hey, well, I'm whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this was interesting. They were all pretty typical: the stone and then the pointy stone on the top, and a, a bit of ironwork, and everything's still there. Yeah, it's just Nobody's trees grown up. Yeah. You would have to I'll romance, you know, I'm fixing it up. But, I mean, you'd have to take everything and. Set it off, you know, map it out, set it off, and clear the place. And when fill Nancy it in was and Nancy O'Neill, some of you I've know seen Nancy. her place over right. there. That's, Nancy owned it prior to you. Right. And the, she, the Walker she acquired it in 90. 1990. Mm -hmm. right. Nancy, I've been here. Yeah. You probably came to a moon party or something like that. She <laughs> had Nancy the big moon parties. Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, look at the so moon. So many people yeah. have been out here. But Nancy had a cup of Eagle Scout troop. That oh, were going to read, yeah. They started the restoration of the cemetery. Did they ever finish it, or do you know? I think they probably did pretty good. That's been probably 15 years or ago or more, or 20, 20. Or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, some kids or somebody at some point went out there and kind of grabbed around and oh, yeah. and took that, things over. But it's all still there. Yeah. It's all still there. So notice, please, we just came from Millie Wright's home, Cypress Hill how this resembles where you just come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they, they call these Tidewater Cottages. Um, I've, I've been involved in a lot of Victorian buildings, not a lot of residential, but they're, they're all different. You know, you take somebody building a house, they call this a Tidewater. <coughs> okay, it's what this fella wanted. And, and, Basically, like the way it's laid out, the floor plan is real common for a tide water, but that was causing the mechanics of air circulating. That was just the best way to do something to get the air circulating. But uh, y'all want to walk? I show you the front. I'm real proud of. <coughs> now, do you know for sure as we come up? Was this an original step? I have here? no idea. I have no idea. It could have been. You see, you, you can turn this stone up on end or, or one of the other and then lay the other one flat. It will make a step. And I've got a picture in the late 60s of these two stones there, but okay. I don't know. No, and they're and it, it's not anything formal, but this house wasn't formal. No, no. This is a very modest house, yet, yet the, the guys acquainted the brick with quality. Yeah. You know, yeah, the so, Flemish bond of the brick is amazing. Yeah, the way they laid the brick, and that's a lot of reasons this house is still here. There were there were two periods of time this house was left for dead. Once back in, it looks to me like maybe in the late 30s or something, yeah. for like 20 years or more. I was through here one time. I've got to tell this story. I've got to tell this story, and there was a, a Mustang... Yeah on blocks parked out here in the yard in an old truck and i stood out there and i didn't know if i ought to come in so as i walked up the drive a lady with a gun walked out here uh, and i just walked small. back out to the road and took the <laughs> i got the message <laughs> yeah, you don't need to be up here and you know, then when she got it was my first opportunity to see it that was until 90 before anybody did anything when Nancy came in 90. Okay, I want to show you what I have, okay? Do you have these? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> this is what it looked like, what he's talking about, when Nancy O'Neill would have gotten hold of it. See, I, and I remember coming here one time, coming by here, and they were unloading hay in this house. Mm -hmm. 
Man, just going this, hay. He's been through everything. And a lot of people around here have partied out here back in the day. It was so grown up, nobody even knew that the house back then people, mm-hmm. kids could get away from it. So, mm-hmm. get back mm-hmm. here so he, this guy is named William Coger, and he bought the land when it was called Colbert's Reserve. Remember George Colbert? Now, we've talked about Colbert. He was involved in the 1816 treaty with the government when the government acquired the land from the Chickasaws. So as a reservation, the government gave him 21,000 acres on the north side of the Tennessee River, which was called Colbert's Reserve. So when the government got, got it back from him, they had to pay him cash. When the government got it back and opened it up, then this became a haven for planters. Let me read you some names. Now, in addition to Coger, there was Neil Rowell. Neil Rowell was a Methodist preacher of that church up there for a while. Hmm. Then he moved to Florence and became an attorney and a physician. <laughs> I, I don't get this. Attorney, physician. <laughs> and he was a member of the First Presbyterian Church. Is Rowell. He, <laughs> he had a plantation here. Buck Key, it's William Buck Key of Key's Cave. John Peters, we talked about him. Wyatt Collier, who's buried in the Florence Cemetery. We saw his grave. And, of course, Coger. Then, in addition to them, neighbors were the Bodies, B-O-D-D-I-E, the Hawkins, another plantation. Uh, and it just on and on, these large planters, because this was some of the absolute best land in Lauderdale County. Right here. Decatur soil. This is what they call it, Decatur soil. It's just a type of soil that was called sweet soil. The old people used to pick it up and taste it. I used to stand and go, mm, I've eaten a lot of dirt pies by my sister, but I never got the sweet bitter. They tested the lime. That's what they were looking for. Mud pie. The mud pie. But everybody get a chance to see what this looked like? Now, you know, you talk about the church over there. That's 1844. That's the oldest uh, Methodist church in Lauderdale County. But there's a, the, a tornado in the early 90s that blew that place down. And, and there was just a little structure left up. One of the pews had some union, uh, where a union slug had been shot into two or three. I don't know what happened to the slugs. That's a secret or something. But um, it made me, because I always try to visualize the way of life around here back in the beginning. And I can imagine, you know, there are no major skirmishes during the Civil War right around here, but they did have, I guess the only thing you call is terrorism. One guy on a horse would go around and just shoot stuff up, and that's what he did over there at that church. And well, I, I was telling them when we came down, it was used as a Union hospital mm-hmm. during the Civil War because uh, between here and Waterloo, most of the churches were torn down for the wood because the largest cavalry ever amassed in North America was amassed at Gravelly Springs, there were 27,000 troops between there and the opposite side of the river down in Eastport, Mississippi. That was for the last, it was called uh, Wilson's Raiders. They were the last raid through Alabama. The largest, get, imagine this, the largest mass cavalry mm. in the history of North America mm. was stationed just down the road. And so they ravaged this whole countryside of food, mm-hmm. livestock, so instead of tearing that building down, they used it as a kind of a headquarters out there and a, and a hospital. Mm. And a lot of the other churches were just simply raised for the wood. Mm. Well, they had to build... me, though, about the, the terrorists coming out here. Is they bound to have armed their slaves and told them they were coming to kill them. Mm. There were a lot of instances you know, of they that. Had, they had to. Because yeah. there was no law and order. Down. There was and no law and order. Known any there was no law and order. That, that's so interesting to me when it does is they were out here to free them. Can we walk around? This, this you know, it had, when you were here, there were two, there were two dormers on the winter. They were added in 90. Um, the quickest giveaway was there was pine flooring in, in the dormers, which the whole entire upstairs is cypress. Okay. And so, and then later on, after they took that floor up, there was not any sign, any... <laughs> hand force nails ever driven in there. So I don't know where they got the idea about to remove the dormers. And this front, this is on the north side, and it was in bad shape around all the openings. And, you know, there's no iron over these openings, so the brick sat on the window with the 
structure. There's timbers in there two inches thick all the way around those windows. Then you see the big lintels on the bottom. There wood too, and that was the structure over the windows to carry the roof and everything. So they had all kind of sagged down through time. I mean, 190 years. So we built all that back, and then you can see the lighter colored brick. At some point, somebody stained this, but that brick was rotten and gone from the roof all the way to the ground. We took it all out. We had a destined brick, a rock brick from the inside of the house. We could use the very same brick. And Can you tell that how, how brick, is it true how thick the walls are? Yeah, you see that inside. It's three, three courses of brick. Three courses it's of really brick. Like, <laughs> it's really like five little buildings here. Yeah, almost. because that gave them an airspace of, of, of some sort of insulation. Well, so, all, the, all the trim and the, the doors, the exterior doors are original. Something happened to the doors on the inside, but they're period. They came from somewhere else, but they're period. But, you know, all these lintels were gone. We replaced all that. And, you know, mm -hmm. A lot of work right I, there. The but, pictures but I have do not have a porch at all on this house. No, Is I can there? see no sign of there ever being any overhang or anything of sort, which I've seen a lot of tile water cottages that, that, that don't. Mm -hmm. Our gable end fell down. I mean, she was kind of already committed, you know, in the process of getting over. She, I'm not, I'm talking about the whole thing collapsed. Man. The whole entire gable end. And that, that's why I've told me why I wanted y'all to see the inside, because the way this house was built originally is the only reason it's still here from two periods of multiple decades of being left for dead, and it's still here. Um, that's what they wanted. But there was an L. <laughs> A roof that just bumped up about where that porch does and probably fell down a bit, you know, washed right. and food prep building right there where the servants had the kitchen. The kitchen. Right. And so that's why that's one of the best openings they had the least damage right there because it was covered up for, for you know, 150 nice. years or something. Yeah. You know. So we didn't get a lot of damage. Where he had plaster and laid up here. 
right. And probably the first period this house was left there, they lost all the plaster in the ceilings, and they came back, and you'll see in the other rooms, and put wood up there, because that was quick. And mm -hmm. they throw that up there. It looks like maybe in the late 30s or something like that. Yeah. And also, I mean everything. Mm -hmm. This this wall, there's a wall up here. You can see where it's mortise and tendon into the plate, which is the, the bottom of the wall. Mortise and tendon. I mean, everything's tied together like that. And that's why this place, this, like this whole end, fall down. Well, one of the things I've read is they didn't have the craftsmen for that. More than likely, those craftsmen were brought here. Many of them could have been African slaves. If, if, yeah. Listen, if Mr. Coger was a clever guy, I mean, all the carpentry and stuff, it, once you do a little bit, it, it, it gets, some people aren't very good at it, but to understand it, and he could have told those slaves how to do it. If he had a plan that he bought, because this reflects like architecture, the way these walls are tied together, it's like, like a plan, like architecture structure oh, yeah, as well. It's not just how it looks. Yeah, there were a number of books that might have been. He could have told them how to do it. Imagine the forks being up with the